to the Diamond Niner Gals podcast. This is episode eight of the 2024 season. I am Nick with producer Brad, making it all go. Hey, hey. And joined as always by the HSC head coach, Ashley Chastain. What's up, coach? Hey, everyone. All right. So we got a big week of Niner softball to get into. Um, do want to make one programming note here. Um, you guys, we, we got questions this week uh, about Kevin not being with us um, last week, and he's obviously not here again this week. Uh, we have not gotten rid of Kevin. We promise. He's not going anywhere. Um, but he has been away a little bit. Um, he was spending time last week with, um, with, uh, with his sister, Kelsey, um, who had been – Involved in a in a, uh, a pretty brave battle with cancer, and um, unfortunately, um, last week uh, Kelsey succumbed to uh, to that battle, and uh, it, it obviously affected a lot of people, including Kevin, Robin, Dylan, Blake, uh, but uh, their family. But not only that, but uh, Kevin's mom and dad, and uh, brother in law, and his niece and nephew. So. Um, Kevin's still away this week. He will be back, taking time, spending it with family, doing what's important. Um, but from all of us here at the show, we wanted to, to one, acknowledge uh, acknowledge the uh, the loss that uh, that occurred, and uh, send all of our deepest sympathies out to um, to the Harvard and Craig families. And Coach, I I know you wanted to wanted to echo that as well. Yeah, I just um, you know I want. Kevin to know that we've been thinking about him and praying for him and his whole family. Um, you know, that's just a, it just reminds you, you know, like here we are, you know, talking baseball and softball every single week, but, um, you know, life happens and, um, you know, there's just so many things that are so much more important than, um, you know, what we, what we're doing here. And so I just, um, you know, I'm thankful so much for Kevin and, and what he has meant to, um, to me since I've arrived in Charlotte. Um, and, you know, just the Phillips road, I know he means a lot to Robert and I know he means a lot to our whole softball program and our entire baseball program and just an avid fan of the department and of the university. And, um, you know, he means a lot to so many people in Niner nation. And so Kevin, we love you and, um, we're thankful for you and just so very much thinking and praying for you and your family during this really difficult time. And um, I hope you feel all the love from us and um, we're excited to have you back whenever you're ready to be back. Yeah. And I can, I can promise you from talking with him, coach, um, he is ready to be back at the ball field and, and mm -hmm. ready to ready to be back on the air and the, the whole thing when, uh, when the time comes. So um, yeah, all of our love and support, buddy. Um, Sorry that this thing had to go down the way it did, but um, can't wait to have you back here. And uh, we'll we'll be we'll be talking Niner gals and Niner baseball when you get here. So our best, man. Coach, um, speaking of the ball field, um, you and the gals had uh, a really good week <laughs> at the field. Um, Four and zero on the week. Um, Ella Chancey, Player of the Week in the American Conference. She's coming up later in the show. Um, Nothing, no, 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 everything came up roses this week, coach. So uh, tell, tell us, tell us about the week as you saw it. Yeah, I mean, it was a great week. Um, went by really fast and just a lot of really great softball. Um, you know, we left South Florida with a really great performance on Saturday, winning the doubleheader to win the series against um South Florida. And then we flew home. We had Monday off and then we had a great practice on Tuesday to get ready for Virginia Tech, who came into town on Wednesday and um, just played really well against Virginia Tech on Wednesday. Um, you know, we've that has become very much a rivalry for us, uh, which is really fun how those things evolve and develop over the years with different teams. And so we look forward to that game every single year. We have a ton of respect for Pete and his whole staff, Mike Lewis, and they're some of the best in the game. And we know every single time we match up with them that it's going to come, um, you know, kind of hair to hair with um, how the game goes. And so we're just uh, we were excited for the opportunity to play them here at home. Um, for this season and just really proud of the gals, the way that they competed. Um, you know, they, they obviously performed really well. And, you know, I thought specifically that um, Gigi Barefoot 
um, came in. She wasn't the starter, but she came in quick at the beginning of the game from the bullpen and just really settled in and gave us her best performance. I mean, an A performance from her and, um, you know, just allowed the offense to do their work. We played really good defense. So really great win all the way around. And I think it'll be kind of a milestone win for this team, a resume win when it's all said and done. So really excited to get that one in the right column for us. Um, and then that kind of just rolled us right into the weekend with Memphis, uh, our second American series of this year. And, um, you know, Memphis is is somebody that, um, you know, they hadn't won a ton of games this year. And so as a coach, right, you always just want your team to play the same no matter what. It's like play the game, don't play the opponent. You know, I think it's really easy to ebb and flow with, um, you know, who comes and plays in the other dugout, you know, whoever's in the other dugout. So we, that's just something internally that we talk a lot about, um, whether, for example, this week we're playing Virginia Tech matchup on a Wednesday night or, you know, or, or Memphis comes into town. Um, and so it's, we just want to be consistent with the way that we approach the game. And um, to be honest, I challenged the girls uh, after Friday's win. We won Friday and we always celebrate winning um, no matter what it looks like. I think that's really important. But we didn't play super well Friday night. Um, we didn't play great defense specifically. I thought that we just misplayed, uh, had some miscommunication, didn't play super sharp um, Friday night and still ended up finding a way to win, uh, which we have a lot of value in. But I challenged them to play a lot better defensively in games two and three against Memphis. And so I thought they rose to the challenge. And winning is hard no matter who you're playing. Sweeping is even harder. So just really proud of them for the performance that they put on this weekend to sweep Memphis here at home. Um, our first American series um, in Charlotte. So um, couldn't have been better. And, you know, that week's behind us. And now we're looking into this next week, which is um, – you know, a lot of travel, a lot of road games here for the Niner gals coming up. So you challenge the gals to, uh, to play uh, defensively well on Saturday and Sunday. And then the gals responded uh, by, by my math here, that's uh, 12 innings with uh, no run scored. So it, was that was that satisfactory, Coach? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was um, definitely something I gave him props for um, Saturday and Sunday post game was just proud of the way that they respond. And that is something with this group I've always really admired since we got going um, in the fall. And then even since February is whatever challenges we have thrown at them. Um, they've, they've responded really well in, in varying circumstances. Uh, so it's um, it's good to see. And I did give him a lot of props for all those um clean innings uh, Saturday and Sunday. It, it's, it's really, um, it, it's really fun to watch this team come together. Um, you guys are kind of clicking on all cylinders right now in a lot of ways. Um, you mentioned Gigi barefoot, but the, the, the pitching staff as a whole um, really has done well. Uh, Brooke Bowling kind of emerged this weekend mm -hmm. as well. Um, and had a good performance for you. Um, the bats are doing their thing. Rody is continuing to kind of be Rody. Kaya Garrett's been in the mix, and now Ella's kind of come and just Ella's looking dominant, uh, which we're talking to her later in the show. So stick around for that. I think you'll enjoy that. But um, yeah, it's it's really hard to say that uh, that you have any any weaknesses right at this particular point, Coach. The way the gals are playing. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think we have a lot of players that are playing really well right now. Um, you know, you spoke about several of them. Obviously, Ella had a breakout um, week and, and got player of the week um, honors, but we're getting great performances from barefoot, from bowling. Um, Lena Elkins is looking uh, more like herself again in the circle. Um, we always get great defense from Hoffler and Chansey, um, got, Kaya Garrett has found uh, herself in the lineup at the top, um, you know, the past about five to 10 games and has been really productive for us. rody has been consistent. Even Abby Knight, who has really been consistent for us all year. Um, Olivia Williams, as a freshman, has been stepping up and doing a really good job for us on both sides of the ball. So we have a lot of players that are hitting their stride, which makes everything, um, you know, come together as a team. So I love where they're at. Um, you know, they're not perfect. They're going to make mistakes. Um, we're going to have games where 
you know, we pitch to win it and then games where we hit to win it. Um, it just kind of is the game and ebb and flows, as you guys know. But, you know, we just want to give ourselves a, the best chance to win. And, you know, something that we've been talking about as a program internally is just the commitment to always do our best. Um, you know, every time we get an opportunity to lace up and, and wear the uniform together and compete together, uh, you know, making the commitment that we're going to do our best. And and that's our A game. And and what does that look like? You know, really talking through what is our A game in every, every area of the game, you know, and, and how every single person on our roster really contributes to that. It's not just the players that you see on the field every weekend. Um, if you watched us or followed us this weekend, it was an opportunity for us to get a ton of people into the game. And so we had some really um, just special internal moments of, of people getting opportunities Um you know, those are those are kind of my favorite days um, when you can give opportunities, you know, all the way down the roster. So just really proud of them. I love where they're at. Um, you know, when you go on the road, we're going down the road to Liberty on Wednesday, who um, is a good opponent. We have a ton of respect for Liberty. And um, it was a close game that we played last year against them um, in Charlotte. Uh, it was a pitching duel between Keeney and Grass uh, for seven innings. And so, I'm really excited about the matchup this year. And then we go the next day back on the road to Greenville, North Carolina for our third American series um, against ECU. And, you know, ECU is somebody that we haven't played since um, I've been here at Charlotte. So really excited just about creating that rivalry, um, you know, in state in conference. And I'm really excited to kick off um, the series with them in Greenville. So, Coach, as we stand right now, you're you're now sixteen and nine, five and one in the league. So, obviously, off to a great start. Um, strength of schedule. We talked a little bit about that with uh, with CJ last week. Strength of schedule took a little bit of a hit um, mm -hmm. from the three games with uh, with Memphis over the weekend. Obviously, not in your control because those are league games. Uh, but still, your your RPI is is settled at about thirty. Uh, right now, which I, I think this time last week we were talking about a, like a uh, maybe a 17 that went to 13 after beating Virginia Tech. Um, mm -hmm. It is what it is. Uh, league games are league games. But it, is it is it OK now? Do, do, I, do I have permission now to start viewing this as like a tournament resume? Or 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 am, or am I still too early? You you can uh, you can talk about it however you need to. Um, I think internally <laughs> for us, it's a little early. Um, you know, I know that the girls are watching it closely. You know, it's a little early for us to start talking about it as a program, I think. But um, our focus is just to keep winning and keep, like I said, doing our best right now. And it all is going to work itself out. You know, that was that's why we put ourselves in a position to have the strength of schedule that we do um, is so that way, you know, we just play hard, play the schedule, um, you know, win some games and, and we put ourselves in a good position. I think right now we're very much on the pursuit to win the American and, you know, that's something that this team really wants to accomplish is to win the league for the first year that we're in it. Um, and so, you know, that's very much on, on the gals minds. It's something that we're talking a lot about is just, um, you know, our focus in conference now that we're there. So, um, you can talk about all you want to, um, I'll probably add more to the conversation in probably about a month. <laughs> well, that's the kind of thing we talk about on my side of the net, yeah. you know, is, is mm -hmm. like a, a win like Virginia tech. You start thinking about, man, that's a resume builder right there. Yeah. Uh, you start start talking about like quad one wins and all that stuff. That's, that's the mm -hmm. kind of stuff we talk about on my side of the net. You don't get to talk about it over there. Um, <laughs> although I will say, I will say that, and then I, again, gals cover, you know, earmuffs gals don't listen to this, but you've got that contest at East Carolina this weekend. Uh, but then you're coming home the next weekend for Wichita state, which, you know, we do not want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but that's, that's, that's one versus that's that's potentially one versus two right there as far as mm -hmm. the pre rankings go at least so yeah it, it's it, some 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 stuff's gonna happen pretty soon that's that's pretty gonna be very yeah. fun to watch 
Uh, yep. So I, I know we, we, we spoke briefly. Your you, uh, gals are going to Liberty and you guys, I mean, that's a good program. They've, they've always had a, a good solid program uh, and they're a good, uh, what I would call a schedule builder type of game. Mm-hmm. It's never going to hurt you to play, uh, play Liberty midweek. Uh, but it looks like, it looks like weather may impact you going into the weekend. Um, mm-hmm. down in so I think fans yeah. should maybe just prepared to uh, all those games, all those games this week, including Liberty, will be on ESPN Plus. But this weekend may require a little bit of patience because uh, it looks like some rain's coming in. So um, keep keep an eye on the schedule. I'd, I'd, I'd stay tuned to social media because some stuff might have to change based on what happens with the weather. But mm-hmm. it's going to going to be an exciting weekend uh, of softball. And, and I hope I, I mean, I know that. Um, I really don't know. I know East Carolina supports baseball um, like their life depends on it. It's it's unbelievable the support they have. I really am not in tune to their softball culture. Um, I, I don't know if I don't know if you've yeah. got any if it or not, but I, I just don't know that much about it. You know, I'm kind of with you there. I um, obviously the the following that ECU baseball has. Um, you know, accumulated over their success over the years um, is awesome. I know we both were at the regional uh, that we went to in 21. Has it been that long? 2021? Um, Yeah. So I I honestly, I don't know. I've actually never been to East Carolina. um, And so this will be my first uh, trip there. And um, so I'll, I'll let you know next week when we, we, talk about uh, how the weekend went, you know, kind of what their environment was like. So I'm, I'm really anxious and excited to get there and kind of see how it is. And there is some weather um, forecasted really all over the state for the weekend. So um, yes, we, we're going to do our best to um, maneuver around that. It's just kind of a part of it. Um, we'll keep everyone updated as, as best as we can uh, via uh, Twitter is, is usually the best way to get the most uh, up-to-date information. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's going to be interesting how, how the environment is there. Um, so we can, I'll give you a, a report on it when we're here next week. Yeah. I'm curious about that. So they will get a ballpark, a ballpark review from uh, coach Ashley producer. Brad mm-hmm. says that uh, softball is currently at a 28 RPI. So mm-hmm. that's, that's apparently the real time RPI. So that's good. That's good. Um, more work to do, but uh, start all starts on Wednesday night uh, with a really good Liberty squad. So uh, would be great to get that win on the road. I'll tell you what, Coach, um, when you've got a reigning player of the week, I, I think it's worth just bringing them on and talking to them. So what do you say we uh, we transition over and bring on Ella Chancy? How do you feel about that? Well, I am. Ella Chansey's biggest fan, number one here. She has impacted me um, since I've since I've come to Charlotte and been the head coach here. She's impacted me tremendously um, as a coach and as a person. She's someone that I admire uh, tremendously. And so anytime I get to talk to Ella, whether it's a practice on the field or if it's, um, you know, just on the bus, on the away trips, I just cherish those moments. And um, so – I, I love that we're having her on and she obviously had um, just a stellar performance and earned player of the week. And so we're just really, really happy for her. All right. Now let's bring on junior third baseman, Ella Chancy, reigning AAC conference player of the week. What's up, Ella? Hey, I'm excited to be on here today. We are excited to have you on. This is your first time on the show, and uh, we love getting to know you gals this way. Uh, so this is this is a lot of fun for us as well. We appreciate you making time for us. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. All right. So as we normally do, uh, Coach Ash, you feel free to to interject where you where you have a good story to tell. Um, you know, it, it, especially if it's going to um, cause um, any kind of embarrassment or discomfort, anything like that. We love those types of stories that you tell. But we're going to back up, Ella, and just kind of work our way through your your softball career um, and, and talk a little bit about your season here at Charlotte on the back end. So uh, you are originally from Athens, Georgia. So I guess this begs the question. I mean, you had to grow up a dogs fan, right? I did. Yeah. I went to a lot of UGA games growing up, 
So for every sport, not just softball, but football, basketball, everything. So how cool was that to go back and, and, and play there and, and maybe even upset them a little bit? Yeah, honestly, that was one of my favorite games, I think, in my career so far, especially just having so much of like my friends and family that were able to come out. And then, you know, obviously to upset them, that was really fun, too. And I remember like so many people coming up to me after and they're like, y'all are actually really good. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been saying. And so I really loved getting to play there. It was really cool. Actually, what I would think, uh, Coach Ashley, is they they would have been coming up to her and saying, how did we let you escape? <laughs> right. That's what we think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always really cool to be able to take the players back to where they're from and so when we scheduled that um athens tournament and i think it was the second weekend in the 23 season um you know ella was on my mind for that uh, you know she's been a cornerstone of our program really since she walked on campus a few years ago and she's been a key integral part of building this thing and who we are today and so it was really cool for us to be able to take her back home and uh, fill the stands with her people. And then, you know, just to beat Georgia that Sunday before we came home was just the cherry on top for the weekend. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we don't know how we stole her out of uh, Athens, Georgia, but we're, we, sh we are sure glad we did. <laughs> so Ella, let's talk a little bit about home. Um, it, growing up in Athens, uh, was it always a given that you were going to play sports were you from an athletic family or, how, how did that how did that come to be that you found yourself on the softball diamond? Yeah, well, I would say I, I'm i from a fairly athletic family. Um, my parents didn't play sports in college or anything, but they did play a lot of sports just throughout their whole lives and throughout high school. And so honestly, from a young age, it was very like a known fact that I was probably going to play sports. And so I actually tried out soccer first because that was probably the only sport I could play at the youngest age possible. And I absolutely hated it. And I knew that wasn't for me. And so the next thing I tried out was softball. And at the age of four, it was technically T-ball. But that was something I just fell in love with from the very beginning. So screwed up four, didn't look back, started playing travel ball at about eight years old. And so ever since then, I've just been all about softball. Also played some basketball too, but softball was my main love. So. You know, that, that's so interesting talking to to people, well, people younger than producer Brad and I, for sure. Um, soccer, when, when – uh, and, and Brad played soccer in high school, but um, I don't remember any of my friends playing soccer like when we were little. It really had not caught on yet. Um, now all kinds of little kids play soccer. Mm -hmm. But when, when I was – you know, when I'm four, five, six years old, I don't think I knew a soul playing soccer. Um, and it was, it was baseball. It was basketball. Some people played football, but, but not all, but everybody pretty much played baseball and, and basketball. But, but yeah, I, I never, I, I can watch a little soccer these days. I have learned enough of the game, but it's, I, it's still not, not really my jam. So I, I'm with you on that. Ella. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play yeah. that bit. So when, when you got, how old were you when you first got on the field? Four or five years old? Yeah, four. Four years old. And mm -hmm. so this, was, this this is like your parents thinking, well, we need to get little Ella, because you are the oldest, yes? I am the oldest, yes. We need to get I'm a little older. physical activity, and we need to get her out of the house, and let's sign her up for softball. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what happened. They were trying me out for all sports, and then softball was the one thing that clicked. So how old were you when you started to realize I'm kind of good at this? Um, you know, probably around eight years old. Um, I grew up like playing a lot just from where I'm from. I'm at, I actually, you know, went to high school at Madison County. So that's where I grew up playing a lot. Um, just like little league, you know, building up from there. And so I was about eight years old when I went to try out for, I guess, the fall ball teams for our little league. And I remember them, you know, telling me like, hey, you're going to play 18U. 
And so I was playing with a bunch of like 16 year olds, like kids who are my dad. I remember him saying like the kids were literally driving themselves to the games. And then here I was eight years old pitching to them. And so and playing shortstop. And so that's kind of I think when I started to realize, you know, I could actually be pretty good at this. Oh, OK, OK, hold on. <laughs> you were playing at eight years old. You were playing against 16 year olds. Yeah, that was the case. And and you were pitching to them. Yep. <laughs> and I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you were having some success at it. Uh man, that had to be pretty that had to be pretty disheartening. Think about it from their perspective. <laughs> that had to be pretty disheartening to face an eight year old in the circle and to come up empty. Yeah, well, I don't know if many people knew how old I was then. But I've always been a little bit taller, so I guess I gave off the appearance that I knew what I was doing and I belonged there. So <laughs> if they knew or not. So maybe you were maybe you were eight, but you passed for um, they just figured maybe you were twelve. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I I don't recall that we've talked to a lot of different players, uh, coach, on uh, the softball side and the baseball side. I don't think I've ever heard that story before where an eight year old was competing against 16 year olds. Uh, is, is that's gotta be a rarity. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think usually maybe if you're 14, you play up to 16. Um, but I also, this is a new story for me too, Nick. So I didn't know you were playing 16 year olds when you're eight Ella, but I'm not super surprised knowing her, knowing her dadly. Like I, I'm really not that surprised. The, the other thing to unpack here is you were pitching at the time. Mm -hmm. So how far did you take that? How, how far did you pitch? Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't do it for a super long time. It was started in about when I was about eight and went until I was about 10. And so I was real invested in it when I was doing it, but eventually I just decided, okay, I don't think, the pitching side is for me and I wanted a little more, you know, action with hitting and fielding. And so that's kind of when I gave it up when I was about 10. So there's no chance that, that coach Ash is going to need another arm at some point. And, you know, I mean, a position player pitching happens in baseball all the time. And I will point out, Ashley, that, that it's usually a lot of times it's a third baseman, somebody on the left-hand side of the infield when, when that occurs, so, look, I'm just saying that maybe, maybe, maybe Ella could make an appearance. You know, it's going to take a lot for me to take her off of third <laughs> after all of this time with her being at third. So, I think now that we're on the back half of her career, as much experience <laughs> as she has at third, I, I, I think we probably would would pick someone else uh, to try it out if we needed it. I. Uh, I think that's fair. You probably wouldn't. You probably wouldn't want to do that anyway, would you, Ella? I don't know. I've always kind of joked about it that it's my dream to, you know, make an appearance. But yeah, in reality, no. <laughs> yeah. You never know, Coach Ash. I mean, you never know. It's, who knows what the future holds? So we'll have to keep an eye on that. So as you continued to, to progress, you, you moved away from pitching and, and started, started uh, playing the field. Um, was it always infield? Did you spend some time in the outfield? Did you move around different positions? How, how did that process play out? Yeah, so when I actually started playing travel ball um, on my first team, I played outfield originally. So spent a little time in the outfield, and that was just mainly because I was playing with some older girls who they stuck in the infield. Uh, but eventually I worked my way out of the infield back in, you know, into the infield because that was just my favorite. I loved playing the infield and it was usually like shortstop or third base. So I've always kind of played on that side of the field my whole life. Spent a little bit of time in the outfield, but not much. Do you remember hitting your first home run? Yeah, I actually do. I remember – I think I was 13 at the time, probably. So I'd hit some before, you know, like in practice and stuff. But 
I remember hitting my first official one over the fence and that was like a feeling like no other because then after that I was like okay I'm going to start doing this more and more and so yeah that's definitely a memory that's that I have in my mind that was just something that was really exciting for me that that's pretty cool um so as you as your career career is progressing um you're playing travel ball uh having success you're 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 uh working your way into the infield you're demonstrating your ability on the diamond uh when did you start to think that playing in college much less d1 uh was a possibility yeah so i think obviously that's always the dream like as soon as you start playing especially travel ball like that's the ideal thing that you have in your mind but for me probably was transitioning into like 16 U that I started to be like okay yeah this is definitely something that I'm gonna do not just something that I want to do and I made it a goal of mine um so probably as soon as I started playing 16 U I was like okay this is something that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna accomplish So we, we always talk about this uh, with, with the gals when they come on. So do you remember the first time that you were aware that Charlotte was looking at you? Do you remember that first contact? Do you remember those, those early days of your initial recruitment with the Niners? I actually do. Um, so it was a summer that I was playing in California for PGF. And I think it was 2019, maybe 2018, somewhere in there, I think 2019. And I had a teammate who was a year older than me who was actually committed here. And I remember after one of our games, she actually came up to me and was like, hey, I think my coach might be interested in you. And I was like, oh, like, that's really cool. And so up to that point, like I hadn't honestly looked at Charlotte as an option because I, I mean, I hadn't had much interaction with Coach Ash or any of the other coaches. And so actually that's a vivid memory that I do have. We were at PGF in California. And so, yeah. Coach Ash, is that, what's your first memory of, of seeing Ella on a ball field? Yeah, I think that summer of 2019, I th Ella's team had been one that I had watched and followed in some of my previous jobs before I came here. So I was really familiar with Ella. And I think when I got the job here in June of 2019 and I recruited all that summer, I was hiring the staff at the time and recruiting pretty much solo for most of that summer. And so I remember um, some of those conversations with Ella's, uh, you know, travel ball coaches at the time of, of, hey, like I've just got this job at Charlotte. Would Ella be interested in, and being recruited by us. Um, and so that, I think that's where it all started. And then we watched her that fall once we got to Charlotte and we started getting to know our, our current team and kind of where we were at. Um, and then COVID hit, if I am remembering correctly, COVID hit and then Ella, the fall after we kind of got out of COVID, um, I think is when Ella came to, she started coming on campus more. So she came to some clinics that we did, um, just some events, some camps, some clinics and worked with us. And I think from then was really the time that we knew that we wanted Ella a part of what we were doing. Um, you know, I had watched her play for years and, you know, Ella is like the kindest person you'll ever meet. Um, she's very, um, she's really soft-spoken. And to be honest with you, here's some little, you know, stories for you. The first semester, yes, Ella's uh, freshman fall, which um, would have been what year, Ella? I'm like trying to. Uh, 2021. Okay. Yes. So your freshman fall of 2021, Ella is very soft spoken naturally. But when she speaks, it's like very meaningful. Like whenever Ella has something to say, she kind of, she catches the room. She like holds the room's attention. Like, and it, even to this day, it's still very much like that, even though her voice is, I think, a lot stronger in the program than it was when she came in as a freshman. I think Ella came in as a freshman and she was just like, 
she did everything right. She was doing what she was told to do. Um, you know, she started getting better, but she never spoke a word. And so I, I think I told the staff after the fall season, we were like in November, December, I'm like, do you guys think Ella's going to start talking? I was like, I don't even know her, the sound of her voice in my head because I haven't heard her say that many words. I was like, how do we get her out of her shell? And so I, that spring, um, as a freshman in 22, that was uh, the first spring she competed here. And she just had a breakout freshman year. Statistically, she played every day for us at third base. Um, and so I think that she started kind of opening up and finding her voice in the program. And even though she was still soft-spoken, I, I actually – had a lot more conversation with her in the spring than I did in the fall. She had gotten, I think, a little bit more comfortable. And we had started talking about her um, being able to find her voice in the program and be herself. And um, I, I also vividly remember a conversation we had started her freshman year. It was probably about early March. I think we'd played through February and she had played just outstanding defense at third. She had not made an error at third base, which as you know, she gets a lot of opportunities. So that was quite the accomplishment to start her freshman year, the month of February without an error. And we get into like late February, early March, and Ella makes an, a routine error. Like it really wasn't a big deal. Like I don't even remember what it was. Um, and she just completely shuts down. And, you know, to the coaching staff, we moved on quick. You know, it was kind of one of those things of like, oh, okay, she, yep, she is human. Here we go. You know, and uh, she just shut down. And I just recognized, I was like, gosh, like she is not handling that very well. And I think she made another error really. Re um, it was quick. It wasn't, I don't know if it was if it was the next game or if it was the same day or something like that. But not too long after she made a second error. And I could tell she was just so upset. And so I was like, okay. She came to my office and we started talking about it. I was like, okay, like, tell me where you're at. I can tell you're upset. You made a couple mistakes. And um, she told me that she had set out her freshman year with a goal not to make one error at third base. Oh, wow. Yeah. And if you know Ella, she's the kindest person. She's very goal oriented. She's very um, perfectionist mentality, like a uh, personality. Like she wants to get everything right every single time, which makes her so special. And it has made her so special in our program because she's like, she is the standard. I mean, she has set the standard over the course of her career and she just upholds it every day. But I remember we had to have that conversation and I was so taken back by, I'm like, she set out her freshman year as our starter at third base, not to make one single error. And so when she did, she just like, it crushed her. And so I learned a lot about her in that conversation about really what makes her her. And it's why she's so good is because she just holds herself to such a standard. But we had to talk about like, hey, you're going to make mistakes. And so we had to work backwards. I'm like, okay, how can we handle these a little bit better? when they do happen. So now she has, you know, a great thought process and mentality and knows how to work through failure so much better than she did then. Um, but I will never forget that conversation. I was just so taken back by how good she wanted to be. Um, and that one, that one or two errors her freshman year had just crushed her heart. And so we brought her back and obviously she's had a stellar career since then. And we're just really halfway through it. Um, you know, I'm really excited about, her future still with us. You know, I, <laughs> Ella, I love, I love it. I love the mentality. I love, I love the goals. Um, but yeah, uh, Coach Ash handled it way better than, than, than I probably would have because my, my first reaction, this is why I'm not, hey, Ashley, this is why I'm not coaching. My first thought <laughs> would have been, well, that's a stupid goal. <laughs> <laughs> because it's never it's never going to happen you can't be perfect none of us are right but i mean it's great that it's it's a great desire it's great but mm -hmm. it's actually you know you know but what i would say uh, is uh it's interesting that you bring up her voice ashley because jimmy touchstone and i were just talking this weekend about what an excellent communicator ella is on the diamond there was one play in particular that that, that highlighted that um, near the end of the Sunday game, uh, they laid a bunt down. 
And I think it was Raina. Raina was behind the plate. Raina was well on her way to coming out and, and picking the ball up. And she probably was not going to get the out at first. But Ella came in. You could hear Ella all over the ballpark taking charge of the situation. She played the ball perfectly and made the out coming way in from third base. Um, and, and we were just talking about what a, what a great communicator she is on the field. Uh, so it's, so it's interesting that you talk about, we are talking about someone from going from a freshman that you don't even know what their voice sounds like to someone who, um, you know, 24 hours ago, whose voice was echoing through the ballpark because everybody could hear it. So that's a, that's a pretty cool contrast, uh, to think about as far as the growth that, that, that she's made. Yeah. I mean, it, that's really what it is. It's just the growth that we challenged her with, um, you know, throughout her freshman year. And I mean, she's, Ella has changed so much since she got to campus in all the right ways. I mean, I just, I'm so proud of who she is now and just having the lens of where she started and where she is now. And, and really like, I still believe like her best, her best is still in front of us because, you know, here she's sitting, you know, halfway through her junior year and, you know, got the player of the week award this week in the American. She's playing so well for this team. And um, it's just a testament to her being committed to being her best um, every single year semester that we challenge her with something different. I think that this year in the fall, I really challenged her leadership because she's not a captain for this 2024 team. Um, but a little foreshadowing, I would not be surprised if she's a captain for our 2025 team next year and just preparing her for that role. And she's that very much second layer of leadership behind Corey, Sam, and Kayla, and she supports them. And she's a huge voice in the locker room now. And, you know, she just, um, I think she recognized what she could be for this program a couple years ago, and she has worked her way into that role. And um, so I'm just, I'm proud of who she is. I think that um, her story from start to where we are now is, you know, a personal favorite of mine and um, just really excited for where she's at and also for what's to come. Yeah, so a, a few of those, just to uh, round out the point you were making about her freshman year, a um, few of the accolades here uh, from 2022, extra inning softball, all freshman team, uh, Conference USA, second all team, all freshman team selection, Conference USA, uh, now holds the record for freshman home runs, freshman RBIs, uh, that's 11 homers, 38 RBIs, both both program records. Um, but doggone it, Ella, you made a couple of errors at third. So, you know, I don't, I don't, yeah. You, what were you thinking? Come on. <laughs> Let's, I know. Just, just, just shake your head, Ella. It's okay. You're doing fine. So let's talk a little bit about this year. Um, because we've, we've, we've been, look, we've, this has been a fun season already. Um, but for you, uh, you came into the season. I know it's, I, I think we've established that you put high expectations on yourself. Um, you came into this season with high expectations for yourself. And let's, let's be honest, you were not, particularly your defense is always a constant. So you're taking care of business at the hot corner, but at the plate, you were, you were struggling a little bit those first few weeks of the season. Um, but my goodness, that's all over now. Talk a little bit about your thought process as the season starts and you're not having the offensive production that you want, but just talk about your, your thought process as you're working your way through uh, towards that breakthrough. Yeah. So I'll kind of rewind a little bit, even going back into the fall, I just knew that I needed to set myself up in the best way possible uh, for this season. And, you know, I think I learned a lot from last year and kind of the mindset that I took into last year of like putting too much pressure on myself. And so I knew that going into this season, I was just going to want to be able to compete like in the best way possible. Um, so a lot of that was just like learning how to trust myself again, I think, in the box. And I feel like I started to do that throughout the fall. And um, so going into the season in the beginning of the spring, I was pretty hopeful for how things would start out. And so I mean, I had a good first game against Florida State, and so I was like, oh, this is awesome. Um, but then, you know, we had a few games after that where I wasn't necessarily getting hit, so I might hit the ball, but it might be right at somebody and i get out. And so 
really through all that, I was just trying to keep myself in a mindset where it wasn't like, you know, I was too far away from, you know, getting another hit or, you know, a breakthrough. So throughout all of this, I've just kind of been trying to tell myself, like, you're literally just one swing away from a breakthrough. And I think slowly but surely, I've been able to work my way um, back up in an upward trend. So I may not have been able to start the season out on, you know, a super hot foot or on the right note necessarily. But I think just having the mindset of knowing that if I trust myself and I trust the preparation that I've been putting in with Katie and, you know, really trusting, you know, just to get my swing off that eventually uh, the results are going to show through. So that's kind of what I've been, you know, thinking about mentally, but I think it's really starting to show up on the field that, you know, things can happen and that it might not be perfect at the beginning, but eventually because of the hard work you put in, it'll come through. Yeah, it, it seems like you had, um, as I recall, I, I remember you having a couple of doubles um, down at South Florida that that sort of started to show some signs that, that you were, were starting to put it together a little bit. Uh, and the next thing you know, and Coach Ash, I think what what did you say? What the stat was in the last ten games, Ella's hitting six hundred. I think she's saying three seventy eight the last ten, but like six hundred the last five. So um, definitely, um, you know, just on a absolute upward tra- trajectory. I think, Nick, you you called it a couple of weeks ago. You're like, I feel like Ella's about to get hot. And I said, yeah, let's go. Because um, when Ella when Ella is on, um, you know, and hitting is hard, you know, you're going to have peaks and valleys throughout your career and in, in, in a particular season. And, um, you know, it just the offense really always feels like it's um, very together when Ella is on. And so just the past 10 games for us have been super productive offensively, a lot of fun for the gals. Um, and, you know, and Ella's been a huge part of that. So um, obviously had a stellar um, performance down at South Florida. And then that continued in our Virginia Tech, Tech game on Wednesday of last week. And then, you know, just really had, um, you know, just an – breakout series against Memphis here at the Sioux this weekend. So, um, yeah, just really proud of her. I think, I think something, Ella, you know, just for, in my viewpoint, something that you've really, I think just learned, um, and really embraced over the past, you know, two and a half years at this point from the time you stepped foot on campus to here we are now is, you know, this, this game isn't who you are, you know, it's, it's something that you love and, you can tell Ella's passion and heart for the game um, from the moment that you show up, whether we're playing at the Sioux or whether we're playing away. I mean, I even today got an email from somebody that was in town watching Memphis play and was just so impressed by um, Ella and just inspired by the way she played the game. And just, you know, you can just tell the love and the passion and the heart that she has for what she does. But I think something that she's learned is, you know, this is just what she does. It's not who she is. And so it just doesn't define her. And so the failures, the successes on the field, it doesn't make her Ella. Like all her heart and her character and who she is off the field is really, um, you know, her identity and who she is. And I think that's a way that she's just been able to um, just handle a ton of adversity that has come her way. And, and it is what makes her um, so good. You know, Coach, I'm only comfortable accepting the the, the credit for calling that because <laughs> we have it on tape. I mean, it's out there. It's on YouTube if you want to check that out. So you don't have to take my word for it, Ella. I, I, I said Ella's about to get hot, and <laughs> then you made me look good. So, you know, I, I, I owe you. I don't know what I owe you, but I owe you. I, I got to be right <laughs> about something, and I'm glad I was. Um, cause it's awesome to, to, to watch you, um, just explode onto the scene and win player of the week this week. And I know you're going to keep going with it. Um, so Ashley mentioned about, uh, talking about your passion. Uh, I noticed you're an elementary ed major. So, um, my, my wife is a teacher. I'm an educator as well. Um, elementary ed, I, I gotta say that takes, that's a calling. That that takes a passion for it. So um, 
talk a little bit about your your path and your desire to to become an educator and and choosing elementary ed as a major. Yeah, so coming into college, I actually had the idea that I wanted to become a physical therapist and do an exercise science. But actually, the summer before coming to Charlotte, I just ended up doing a lot of work with kids from my hometown, like a lot of uh, summer camps, softball camps, you know, coaching. And I kind of began to have this idea of like, okay, actually, I think I might want to be a teacher. And so I've been around, you know, education. My mom's a teacher. My grandma is a teacher. So like I've been around it before. Um, And so I just kind of began to have this idea that it was something that I wanted to do and that it was something that God was probably calling me to do instead. Um, I didn't really have the best feeling about doing uh, physical therapy. And so it became very clear to me that I would need to switch my major. So I did that right before coming to Charlotte and I began taking classes for that. And really ever since I kind of had that moment where I realized it, I've never really looked back on it. I just love being around kids and working with them and, you know, seeing their face light up when they learn a new thing. And even like on the coaching side of things, like helping them learn how to play softball has been a really cool experience. And so that's kind of why I love it. Um, A lot of people are like, you must be crazy for wanting to go into teaching. But for me, it's something that I just know that I was meant to do. So. Well, I I can tell you this, we need good teachers. Uh, and so the, the, the thought of having um, having you entering the classroom and, and looking out for young folks is is a comforting one because um, we need people that that are dedicated to that. And uh, you definitely have to. Um, it has to be a calling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can tell you that if it's not, you won't make it very far um, just because of the nature of the job. So I, I like the way you're thinking about that, Ella. That's that's pretty cool. Um, do you, do you have any thoughts around like, so you, you've got one more year to go, uh, going to do elementary ed, like open to where, where the future leads. You're trying to stay in the Charlotte area. You want to go back to Georgia or, or are you just going to kind of see how it plays out? Um, You know, I'll probably see how it plays out. I have a good feeling I'll end up back in Georgia somewhere, but I know my, if my family ends up watching this. That's what they'll want me to say. But, you know, I, I kind of just think I'm going to know for sure where I'm supposed to be when I get done with college. And so I'll just see where it all takes me, honestly. Did you tell them all you were doing this? Um, I mentioned it to my dad and my mom. But other than that, I haven't told anyone else. But I'm sure my grandparents are going to be really excited to watch. <laughs> well, at this point, if, if you got anybody you want to say hi to, just, just go ahead. The floor is yours. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll say hi to Linda and Leroy, my grandparents, and then I'll also say hi to Sandy and Rick, my other pair of grandparents. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're gonna love this. I mean, why wouldn't they love this? You're a part of it, so <laughs> that's great. What about Lily Kate? Um, I'll say hey to Lily Kate too. She's usually not as interested in what I have to do. She's kind of, you know, she's grown up now. I'm not as cool as I used to be, but. Oh, is this your little sister? Mm-hmm. And yeah. how old is she? She's 16. Wow. Does she play softball? No, she plays golf. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. So do I. Not well, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> she good at it? Is she a good golfer? Yeah, she's pretty good. She actually already committed to go play at a college somewhere, so somewhere in Georgia. Um, I don't know if she would want me to spread that out, but, I mean, I'm proud of her. She's pretty good. So it's been exciting to see her just kind of grow up and mature into who she is now. That's pretty cool. Well, I think we have to leave it there, kind of out of time for this for this episode, but um, we'll talk we'll talk golf some other time. Um <laughs> Get an update on your sister's golf career, uh, which I'm sure you're great at. But man, this has been this has been fun uh, just getting to know you a little bit, Ella, and hearing Coach Ash talk about your journey and listening to you talk about your perspective. I love doing this, so we appreciate you making time for us. 
Yeah, well, I appreciate you guys having me on. I feel like I've been watching these for a while now, so it was exciting to get to be a part of it. Well, ratings are sure to spike uh, with Ella Chancy on, so look out for that. <laughs> so we're out of time for this week, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Diamond Honor Gals podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, think about subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications. That way you can find out whenever there is new content. You can also find us on Spotify. Diamond Niner reports all over social media. You can check us out on Twitter, which I refuse to call X. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. We were never on TikTok, so the ban doesn't really impact us anyway. So, for producer Brad, Coach Ashley, for Ella Chancy, this has been Nick, and we'll see you at the suit.